this week we've looked back and remembered with those who were part of the events surrounding World War II. This past Veterans Day, I had the pleasure of spending a portion of the afternoon with two Air Force generals. On the flight line at Andrews Air Force Base, I watched as Lieutenant General Benjamin O. Davis retired, visited with Brigadier General Russell Davis, commander of the 113th Tactical Fighter Wing, D.C. Air National Guard. While they are generations apart, there is a special relationship that is worth seeing and telling. Meet General Davis and General Davis. The older gentleman, now retired, remembers the history that he lived. The younger general now making history as he lives. They are not related, at least not in a familiar way, but there is a sense of kinsmanship that goes with their territory. They are both fighter pilots who happen to be black, born with a dream to fly. One made the dream possible, the other keeps the dream alive. I was terribly disappointed in 1935 when I was at West Point, when having passed the physical and the mental examinations for entry into flying school, the Chief of the Air Corps came back with a, a rather terse statement that the Air Corps had no intention of establishing black units in the Army Air Corps, so consequently there was no place for me to, uh, to attend flying school. But World War II changed attitudes, or at least the necessity for good pilots did, and shortly after Pearl Harbor, the Army Air Corps, despite an Army War Department report that said blacks did not have the aptitude to fly, established flight schools to find out. The most successful? Tuskegee, where a determined Lieutenant Benjamin O. Davis was one of the first to graduate in March 1942. There was a feeling of very great elation that finally, after many, many years of trying, we were now flying airplanes. And to fly they did, black youngsters from all across America keenly aware that a nation was watching. 750 black pilots graduated from Tuskegee in the first three years, and more than 50% eventually saw combat. But even then, they still had something to prove. And Benjamin O. Davis, as the first commander of the all-black fighting 99th, felt the weight. We not only had the uh, enemy airplanes uh, to be concerned about, but we also had the Army Air Corps, which uh, in those days took a very dim view of uh, their black comrades, demonstrating that they could perform at the same level of excellence that whites did. Uh, but history shows the Fighting 99th, under the command of then Lieutenant Colonel Benjamin O. Davis, performed brilliantly in the European theater. In late January 1944, over Anzio, the 99th shot down 16 German aircraft. It was then they were ordered to their most important mission, to escort heavy bombers all over Europe. We never, during the period 1 June 44 until May 9th, of 45 when the war ended in Europe, we never lost a single bomber that we were escorting. And the people who were flying the bombers got to understand that the best escort in the theater was that given by the 332nd Fighter Group. General Davis went on to a distinguished military career, having proven to himself and to his country that the color of his skin or that of the men he commanded had nothing to do with capability or dedication. He was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, penned on by his father, the first black army general. To be sure, he is proud, but the pride he will talk about is for the young men he commanded, who refused to allow maltreatment to affect their performance, a performance that he believes has made a difference. The follow-on actions, not only Truman and integration in the military, but the follow-on actions that took place in Lyndon Johnson's administration, they were bolstered by the performance of blacks, all of which improved and moved up <clears throat> to a crescendo. And today the sound is still being heard here at Andrews where another General Davis represents the living legacy, performing against a historical backdrop eloquently painted by a military master of his era. The belief here is that the best way to say thanks for the past is to be professionally productive in the present. But he remembers. 
when I was in flying school, people said, well, you know, maybe you can't fly well enough to be here. And I said, well, I had seen the black airmen fly at Tuskegee, and I knew I could fly, and, and there was no doubt in my mind that I ought to go do it, and uh, I've been doing it for 30 years next month. So I, I think that uh, the example that General Davis set for me, I hope I can set for a couple of young people during my lifetime. Lieutenant General Benjamin O. Davis retired. Sir, we remember. Now, there is, of course, much more to the story of General Davis and his beloved red tails than we can tell here. And unfortunately, in the ABC movie War and Remembrance, little of any attention is devoted to these brave men and the contribution they made to all Americans. Indeed, it was well after the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum opened that a section of that building was devoted to their memory. But because of the series, we have taken the time to remember them, and perhaps in so doing, we've made a small payment on the enormous debt we owe them. Mm. It's a story that a lot of people haven't known yeah, about either. It's a fascinating story. And sir, you served under the young General yes, Davis. Indeed. All right, That's yeah, right. as All a right. pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tradition goes on. <laughs> That's it for News 7 at 5 o'clock. Thanks for being with us. Sure.